Alright y'all, what's up? Primal here, and welcome back to more Final Fantasy 16. Uh, last we left off, we destroyed the first Mother Crystal, Sid died, we fought Typhon, we got Rama's power, now we skipped ahead five years later, and Clive's taking on Sid's name and legacy. We have a new hideaway, because Titan destroyed the first one, because Kuka was upset that we killed his girlfriend. She really didn't give us a choice. I should just have Blackthorn make me a new oh, one. Oh, you can't. It's just okay. Well, don't just stand there gawping. <laughs> if you're gonna buy some, it'd be quick about it. Again. Oh, don't. I'm not much bothered either way. <laughs> Looks like there's a side quest below us, but... Oh, the boatman. Damn blighted bilge. Is everything all right? Aside from the holes in my hull, everything's roses. The lake water doesn't agree with it, then. That's one way of putting it. And unless you've got some grand scheme to suck the black from the lake like we do in the atrium, that slurry will keep eating away at the timber like young Tech does our lemon tarts. <laughs> I suppose a coat of pitch might stave off the rock for a moon or so. so Assuming we had any pitch, which we don't. Not any bloody more. Doubt the old tub's got more than a dozen runs left in him. Of course, Obelus. Your skiff is our only means of reaching the mainland. Without it, we'd be lost. Well, well I'm glad someone round here sees it that way. To make pitch, you need pitch trees. But in case you haven't noticed, live trees are one of the thousand things sorely lacking in the Deadlands. Now, well, I'm not so unkind as to ask you to fell a faraway forest and lug the logs back here to the mere. Which is why we'll be needing a suitable alternative. And it just so happens I once heard the thorny pitchers of Curltail Falls cover themselves in a sticky wax to trap birds and beetles and whatnot. Might be enough to tide me over. Sounds easier than felling a faraway forest, that's for certain. So we'll go here first and take care of this. Ugh! 
level up. I can't imagine Herbalist needing any more than this. Time to head home. Guess we could. I also feel like we could just also. is one way of putting it. Ugh. Reeks like a chocobo's ass. Oh, I don't suppose the Argo will mind as long as he stays above the waves. Argo? So your boat has a name? I didn't know. Yeah. Same as my old man. He was a ferryman himself back before the blight came. The boat's all I have left of him. Oh. And thanks to you, he'll sail another day. Badge of Might. Those are getting better rewards now. Oh. Let's get you here now. Sid? What said you'd be coming? I trust you don't mind. Also thought you might need some help. And it appears he was right. You were. Uh, could say that, yes. They're saying the Imperials ascended like a storm. No one was spared their fury. Martha tried to step in and calm things down, but. All our efforts got her were a pair of iron shackles and a hard march. Oh, gosh. Aware. Judging by their tracks, they headed towards Sorrowwise Bay. To the Abbey, sheltering Martha's bearers. The bastards. Oh, no. Jill and I will go after them. You take care of the people here. We will. But, um, before you go, one of the locals heard something. He said the soldiers were talking about the culling. Oh, no. I don't know how big this is, but it doesn't sound good. Be careful out there, Sid. You do the same. Cole is right. That was no tavern brawl. It was a message. But to culling. Bearers are the property of the Empire. The garrison wouldn't have the authority to act alone. The orders would have had to have come from higher up. Like your evil mother. Black Shields. The bastards caught wind. The abbot and I were helping bearers. They were gonna hang us both. When the sick rose from their beds. What? Their souls turned on the Imperials. Distracted them long enough for me to get away. Then... They may still be alive. Martha, do you think you can make it back to the inn? Cole is there with the other curse breakers. I think so. Thank you, Clive. Wow. Talk about very lucky. 
What she said is true about those bearers. Black shields. Is this some sort of twisted joke? There has only ever been one order of shields in Rosaria, and they fought to defend all her citizens. Seems a step too far. Even for the Empire. Too late. There might still be someone inside. No. Damn it. I thought you lot were all spent. Murderers. They drove the bearers to this. Wait. These two aren't turned. Ugh. That bitch of an innkeeper must have sent them. Colluding with the enemies of the Empire is a serious offense. And for their crimes shall they be punished. Such is the law. The Black Shields, I presume? To dwell in dark that we may purge the night and welcome lasting dawn. On these our swords we swear. How dare you speak those words! Have you no honor? Clive. This won't take long. I think so. I didn't see the abbot. He may still be alive. See how you here? Abbot. The bearers died protecting him. Calling upon what little magic they had left in their bodies. Clive. He's breathing. Ah! <gasps> Friends of Martha, we're here to help. Are the Imperials dead? They are. Every last one. If only that were true. <coughs> He's referring to the entire Empire. The Black Shields will return. Continue. Rosaria will never be safe unless we save her. Tell Martha to beg Sin's aid and help. This wasn't her fault. I, 
I shall. Kid, where are you? Kid. In here. We found a survivor. Clive. He's already gone. He's gone. I had a feeling. We've laid the abbot to rest, but the bears, they didn't need to die like this. No, they didn't, but it was their choice. They knew the fate that awaited them and chose to meet it on their terms, fighting for those who fought for them. Martha said they rose from their beds, threw themselves at the Imperial so she and the abbot could escape. I gathered the bearers' remains. We should consign them to the tide. There's a drawbridge not far from here. Riddick's jump. The currents there are swift. If the abbot were still with us, he'd have taken the dust there himself and performed the casting. I'll get someone to... I'll do it. Of course. Cole and I will remain here and see to the Imperials. What is that? <laughs> Iron Man, Rink C. Tori's marks. Every now and then, Clave may encounter creatures larger, faster, and more ferocious than most. Well, fly is always, well, fly is always an option. These notorious marks earn him not only renown, but also rare materials that can be used to craft new gear and upgrade existing items. Doom.
Saga. I guess. Uh-oh. I guess that's the full effect of a doom spell? I don't know.
Victorious Mark Slane. Too bad. That must be the bridge. So shall the waters cleanse thee of thy burden, and bear it out to sea. And now they are truly free. I hope so. What of the Imperials? A pyre was made. It's more than they deserve. We should go back. Cole is worried about Martha. All right. Look sharp! They called him so dark. No one survived then. I'm sorry. Before he passed, one of them bade me tell you not to blame yourself. Does it mean I won't? Doesn't mean their blood's not on my hands. Cole said you cast their remains. And that was good of you. But it should have been me. This was all my fault. How? Oh. You couldn't have known. But I did. And I turned a deaf ear to the warnings like the fool I am. The rumors started moons ago. Of black-clad devils descending on villagers in the dead of night to slit the throats of sleeping bearers. <sighs> I assumed it was all just nonsense concocted by the Empire. Nothing but a ghost story meant to make folk think twice about lending a hand to a fugitive bearer. And in ordinary times you would have been right. What these black shields are doing is unthinkable. Which begs the question, why do it at all? My mother obviously has a hand in this. I cannot make sense of her actions. And picking what goes on in that woman's head is a job for someone with more time on their hands. Right now, I need swords and men to wield them, preferably big ones. If those Imperials think they can come in here again and threaten my people, they're in for a rude awakening. That's the spirit, Martha. Oh, before I forget, a Stolas from Otto landed just before you arrived. He asked me to tell you that Gav has returned. Then we must as well. Will you be all right here, Martha? We can stay longer if you wish. No need. I'll be ready should the Imperials come calling. Though I wouldn't turn my nose up if you were to lend me a pair of them strapping young coast breakers. Hmm. 
best off staying where we are. Try not to move. Oi! You there! Are you handy with that sword of yours? Of course you are. Bet you're a bloody marvel with the thing. Now, question is, are you willing to use it or not? Because a flock of noble chocobos are in need of help. Chocobos? You heard me right. Wild birds? Hmm? The big ones? And not just any chocobos at that. Whiteheart and her flock are the bravest birds you ever did see. They protect travelers round these parts from bandits and the like. Chocobos. Fighting bandits. It's true. Why, they saved me from a gang of footpads only yesterday. Nasty lot they were too. And now, they're back. Looking to settle the score. Oh, go on then. D don't just stand there. Go and help them. <sighs> All right. There's a good lad. Where can I find these chocobos? I saw him cut across the way over yonder. The rotten scoundrels were driving the poor things towards the old dock. It's a dead end, that is. You save Whiteheart and her flock, you hear me? There ain't a pluckier bird in all the world. She's a hero to us locals. And don't worry. You'll know her when you see her right enough. I'm sure I will. And good luck to you. I give those no good bastards a hiding from me. Whiteheart. That's quite a name for a chocobo. Further. I thought Ambrosia was one of a kind. You don't think that Ambrosia is. brave birds. Looks like they went that way. These chocobos aren't going down without a fight. There they are. We got you cornered, Feathers. You didn't think you'd seen the last of us, did you? You've been bad for business. But I reckon someone will pay good coin to mount your head on their wall. Not around here, they weren't. Oh. And why's that, eh? Because she's something of a hero in these parts. You hurt her, and I hurt you. Piss off. Or better still, how about we hurt you both? All right then. But don't say I didn't warn you. Garuda!
Safe now. White heart, I presume. <laughs> Do you know her, boy? It has to be Ambrosia. That scar. That scar. She got the knife. It is. It is my chocobo. <laughs> She's okay. See how you were getting on. Oh, well, you sorted the bastards then. I knew you would. <laughs> and the whole flock made it through unscathed. Thankfully, they did. And not only that. Never stop to think our hero here might once have been someone's mound. <laughs> no, I dare say she'd suit a fine fellow like yourself. Reckon our feathered friend must have learned a thing or two from her master. Kind-hearted warrior that you are. <laughs> Bird like her would have cost a princely son. You born a lord or something? Well... <laughs> Oh, no, sorry, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to pry. Don't matter who you are, you done right by me. What is it, girl? She wants her master back, I reckon. <coughs> Told you, and it seems her pals agree. <laughs> is that it? You want to come with me? Well, bugger me if this ain't a heartwarming sight. The lads down the stables will be hearing about this tonight. Oh, stay right where you are. Doesn't she cut an handsome figure, eh? She does mm. indeed. How much do I owe you? Ah, a few scraps of leather's the very least I owe, old white heart. Oh, I'll be sad to see her go, of course. But she's earned her right to happiness and more besides. Don't you worry, we'll get along just fine without her. You hear that, white heart? You've earned yourself some time off. You have fun traveling with your master now. Hmm. You seem awful familiar now I get a proper look at you. That's it. 
when those chocobos swarmed my car on the road, didn't you? Uh... Oh, you're the same guy. Okay, that can't be right. That fellow was a bearer. Must have been my double. <laughs> oh, must have been, eh? <laughs> Oh, that'll be the excitement getting to me, silly sod that I am. Pay me no mind. <laughs> Anyhow, best be on my way. Good luck to the both of you. You take care of your flock for now. I'll call you when I need you. Chocobo unlocked. Gav. I hear there's trouble. There he is. Ah, Clive! <laughs> I've missed that scowl. Where's my report? What, no kind words for your old pal Gav? <laughs> if it's kind words you're after, you're fishing in the wrong barrel. Now sit down, you fool. <laughs> so, you remember how quick the Empire was to occupy the Dominion after the fall of Drake's head? Mm. And how pissed off all the other nations were that they didn't think to do it first? Half a century of independence gone at the whim of a madman. So much for their bloody treaty. Clearly, the promise of unblighted land and the world's supply of crystals was too much for his radiance to resist. <sighs> and now the Republic's finally decided to follow suit, using liberation as an excuse to declare war on Sambrek. Lined up right outside the Dominion's gates as we speak, looking to starve the Imperials into submission. And now all eyes are on the Strait of Orth. While the two nations beat their shields, the rest sharpen their daggers, ready to set upon the war-weary victor. They'll never see us coming. It's time we moved on the Mother Crystals. Four Mother Crystals remain in Storm and Ash. Drake's Breath, near Ironholm. Drake's Fang, in Dalmechia. Drake's Spine, in Walud. And Drake's Tail, here in the Crystalline Dominion. With the bulk of the Republican army marching to Twinsight, Drake's Fang will be left exposed. That is exactly the move Cuckoo would anticipate. If there is anything these past five years have taught us, is that he loves his traps. There is one place, however, where nobody will be expecting us to go. Drake's breath. There's a shitload of sea between us and it, and I've never been much of a swimmer. I have an acquaintance in Port Isolde who may be able to help. Who's that then? My uncle. Excuse me? Byron Rosfield. Lord Byron Rosfield at the Seven High Houses, the trade magnet with holdings in over a hundred cities. Wait. Rosfield. And you're a Rosfield, of course. My uncle's name gave him his start in the world, but it was his acumen which earned him his fortune. Along with a handsome fleet of ships. Well, it's settled then. 
<laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> is now open. I'm for it. What are we waiting for indeed? I think it's all right to touch you. What do you need? Sorry, will it be? Open to speak to you. Is everything all right? Oh, yeah, it's just, well, as you know, we've been trying to grow fruit down here. It's good to know that something of the old hideaway still lives on. Martel's pride and joy. It was a sapling when she rescued it from the rubble, but look at it now. All our hard work's finally paying off. I took it on, you see, after she, well, after she died, and now the fruit's finally ready to eat. And not only is it ready, it's actually tasty. Sweet as you like, in fact. She bred the bitter right out of it. Impressive. And welcome news to more than a few, I'd say. I thought this first harvest could go to the Curse Breakers, on account of all they do for the hideaway. You couldn't take them some, could you? Seems better them coming from you. Okay. It'd be nice being the bearer of good news for a change. <laughs> oh, thank you. She always had a soft spot for that lot, see? And once they've had their share, I'll see to it that everyone else gets some. Here you go. Martell apples, they're called, in honor of her memory. You hear that, Martell? Today's finally the day. <laughs> Shame she didn't make it out with the others, because it seems like quite a, there were quite a few that we did know who did make it out, like Gav and Tarya, and Otto, and the Moogle, Nectar folk we haven't really met yet. something to eat. Yeah. Let's see if Martel. Martel. Now where have I heard that name before? Weren't she the girl from the furrows? Cool she was. <laughs> An odd sort that one. Love plants more than people. I <laughs> am brave as a bane might. Remember when she ran back into the hideaway to collect them trees when Titan attacked? Huh? Wait. These aren't those apples, are they? Well, I'll be. She'd have been proud, and rightly so. Thank you, Sid. <laughs> I 
gift from the backyard. For your service. Blimey, these take me back. I haven't seen a hideaway apple since. Uh, old Sid was the only one who could stomach the things. <laughs> He'd nab him right from the branch, make Martell livid. Not that anyone could stay mad at the man for long. That sounds like the Sid I knew, all right. Planning on keeping that lot to yourselves, were you? Hang on. These aren't Martells, are they? I'm glad to see someone carried on what she started. Can't have been easy, not in the Deadlands. Reckon she'd be happy knowing all her hard work didn't go to waste. Clyde, tell the lad down in the backyard to run some over for me, will ya? <sighs> Not so much as a thank you. Well, I've got some manners at least. Thanks, Sid. You can leave the basket with me. I'll see that the others get their share. Oh, and uh, give our compliments to the gardener, won't ya? That was the last of the apples. Okay. I should head to the backyard and pass along everyone's regards. <laughs> What's the matter, Nectar? The hunt board? It's where the curse breakers post sightings of particularly fearsome beasts. Those that might pose a threat to our operations if they were left to roam free. Just because they can't be dealt with when they're spotted, doesn't mean they can't be dealt with later. Was that what you wanted to know? <laughs> right. Well, leaving your mightiness aside for the moment, the people of Valestia are going through a lot already, what with the blight and the war. The last thing they need is ungodly fiends terrorizing them on top of everything else. So if the curse breakers are too busy to help, then perhaps I can. Or at least I can try. And you say, Sid built this place? Did you come through the forest today? breakers send their thanks and their compliments they were clearly very fond of martel they remembered her a after all these years i suppose she was very kind even to a tongue-tied lummox like me you were one of the good ones martel why did you have to die <laughs> she put everything into her work she wasn't gonna rest until we had fruit sweet enough to enjoy and now we do. When she died, I named a sapling after her. And now it's a full-grown tree. 
Martell lives on through the fruit it bears. And through you. Her dream would have died with her, had you not kept it alive. That's something to be proud of. I, oh, I didn't do anything really, but thank you. You're kinder to me than I deserve. By the way, Otto's expecting some of your crop. And I wouldn't mind some of it either, if that's not too much to ask. Of course not. I'll see that you're both well provided for. They like your fruit, Martel. Isn't that wonderful? I'd say it's about time we planted you some siblings, don't you think? <laughs>